Stop, Eugene. I hope this letter finds you well, as I have exciting news I must share with you. Last night, while I was kicking my feet up at the pub, I was approached by a well-dressed man. His hair was greased back, and his suit was quite snazzy. He was obviously there for business. He told me that he knew me from the research you and I had begun, but never finished during our time at the university. He then went into great detail explaining how he stumbled upon it while attending college, and found that we were onto something. Our research for a cure-all medication was closer to completion than we could ever have expected. He then went on to explain that we are only missing one chemical in our experiment. He called it Scientite, as he produced a small vial of purple liquid from his coat. He informed me that the small vial of liquid was retrieved from a research team in South Africa. The team has found the source of Scientite and said it can be extracted in great quantities, but they need more scientists to aid in their studies. So that is where you come in, my friend. Travel to Africa with me, and we will be remembered as the ones who saved humanity from all illness, all disorders. Signed, Albert Jones. Research entry 34, Dr. G. Friesman. It's been a week since we arrived at the site. Our contractor, Mr. Blue, seems to have forgotten to mention that this research outpost, and the source of this scientite, was being held in the confines of this forgotten temple. The other doctors have made reports of unusual noises coming from the depths. I assured him it was nothing but the wind. I, too, heard these sounds, though. This place gives me the creeps. I just want to finish gathering this chemical and leave as soon as possible. Research entry 88, Dr. G. Friesman. The team was right. The sounds were a warning and we did not heed it. We had just set up after reaching a rich source of cyanide when Birmingham, our botanist, went missing. We called for her on the radio but got nothing back. Soon enough, Lewis, our geologist, went missing during the search for Birmingham, leaving us with only myself, Dr. Kleiner, and Dr. Wang. 
We came back to the main chamber of this place after much discussion. We decided to board the main hall, wait three days for the missing team members to make their way back to camp, and if they do not show, we will return to Mr. Blue to form a proper search party.
Gordon, I hope you aren't offended, but I've gone ahead to the lower levels of the temple with the guides, Carmelio and Elion. The roots of the Quezo Blossom lead down, and I expect to find our biggest harvest yet. It might even be too much for our little team of people to handle. I've been harvesting samples as we go for you and Dr. Wang to collect. The pure extract has to be diluted until we can bring it to a safer place. Carmelo and I unfortunately discovered the hard way that carrying pure cyanite can have some adverse side effects. Uh, nausea, anxiety, paranoia, and possibly even hysteria if exposed for long periods of time. I'll rendezvous back with you tomorrow morning by the entrance. Be safe and don't trigger any Aztec booby traps. Gene.
I don't know if I should be glad or if I should be terrified. A discovery like this would have my name in college textbooks, but I doubt I'll live long enough to see a first edition. This, this is a sacred place, a gargantuan labyrinth for ritualistic sacrifices to appease the Aztec god. He is described as a volatile deity with the power to cure all diseases, forgive all trespasses, and free men of their mortal destiny. Instead of choosing to bless humanity with his divinity, the jaguar god deprived us for the sake of his amusement. It is said that Tezcatlipoca is the begetter of war. His name means, we who are his slaves. Four priests would each choose a limb to bind. Then a fifth would plunge a knife into the sacrifice and carve open his or her body removing the heart while it still beat soundly. They would place the organ in a bowl and toss the body down from the top of the temple. The head would be removed and displayed. 
this temple. It belongs to him. I have managed to ignorantly stumble my way far into its heart. And now, as the last shred of my source then begins to vanish and I finally turn to run, I find myself caged. As I face my executioner now, the routine of writing in a journal soothes me for a moment. As I come to the end of the century, and I raise my head to the dark, I see something stirring, coming to take my heart. Hello? Is somebody there? Please, the door is locked on the other side. Take this key. Please open it for me. If you're there, please answer.
My name is Gordon, and if you haven't noticed, I helped you to get here. And now, I was hoping you could help me. The God of Discord holds my soul here until your sacrifice is complete. You will need the sacrificial tools to finish the ritual. The ritual knife to remove my heart, and the bone saw to remove my head. Once you remove my head, then place my heart on the altar. This won't please the begetter together, but it will banish him and his creatures. The last time I saw those tools, so many years ago, was in the library. Search the hairs there. Need the sacrificial tool to finish the ritual. The ritual knife to remove my heart, and the bone saw to remove my head. you remove my head, then place my heart on the altar. This won't please the begetter together, but it will banish and his creatures. What? You already have both tools? Wonderful news. Hurry, hurry. Finish the ritual. Don't worry about my pain. I've suffered enough.
Eugene ran for miles. Ran until his legs nearly gave out. Once he thought he was far enough, he stopped and looked back at the temple. He heard no more screams of terror in his ears, but in his mind, he thought he heard Gordon's voice. 